Como Show, all the top tunes. Hey, Mulligan. What are you doing? I don't know, I don't know. <laughs> getting just what they get in the big house. It's the Joey and Rory Show. This week's special guest, Wade Hayes. This week's episode brought to you by Lion Chevrolet in Lewisburg, Tennessee. According to Rory and his overalls, they may not have deep pockets, but they sure have a lot of them. Here they are, Joey and Rory! You got the boots, you've got the buckle, you've got the Stetson cowboy hat. You've got the creases in your Wranglers and the scolding in the back. You've got the two-step and the shortage. You've got the waltz down to a T. Hey, you're sure looking good, cowboy. Now all you need is me. You've got the horse. You've got the trailer. You've got the King Ranch pickup truck. You've got the beer iced down in the back seat. And the George Street Hall cranked up. You've got the tank full and the night off. You got nowhere you got to be. Hey, you're sure looking good, cowboy. Now all you need is me. Run right beside you. Everywhere you go. In your arms, out on the dance floor. Cheering for you at the rodeo. You've got the land. You've got the cattle. You've got the thousand acres spread. You've got the brand, the barn, and the bunkhouse, and the king-size cedar bed. You've got the view of Oklahoma, and a gal would die to see. Hey, you're sure looking good, cowboy, now all you need is me. Don't go anywhere. We're going to be right back. This week's special guest, Wade Hayes. My name is Wade Hayes. I'm originally from a little bitty town in central Oklahoma called Bethel Acres. I don't know that I actually chose music, but maybe it chose me. It, it was an odd deal. It seemed like I always came back to it. I went through four years of college and just always came back to music. I recorded my first album in 1994 and had my first number one in 1995. The song Is It Already Time is a song that I wrote when I was going through chemotherapy. Having had cancer and not knowing if I was gonna make it through it, this song kind of came out but I didn't know what to do with the song, and finally some friends of mine urged me to record it, and they released it to some radio stations, and it just started gaining momentum. And that wasn't originally my intent for the song, but I thought it was a good thing because the bottom line is I want to urge people to get screened for colon cancer. If you let it go as long as I did and not know it, then that's when you get in trouble. I, I almost didn't make it. Every line of this song is true, so I hope that uh, it, it means something to somebody out there. Well, no 
something Thursday That's what the doctor said We'll see what we're dealing with See how far it's spread Now just go home And try to get some rest I made it to the truck I stared in the rear view How are you supposed to take it When you get that kind of news just hold on Wait for some damn test Nothing I could do or say Right then could change a thing So I sit there alone Wondering Is it already time Time to move along have I lived my life? Have I written my last song? Is this really real? Have I reached the end of the line? Is it already time? I got to thinking how fast the years have flown. Sure, it might have done a few things different had I known. I might not get a chance to make repairs. It was just yesterday I was still a kid. Now I'm over 40, but too young to be facing this, but no one yet has told me life is fair. That faith can move a mountain and cast it in the sea, but Jesus will I find that mustard seed, or is it all? Ready time, time to move along. Have I lived my life? Have I written my last song? Is this really real? Have I reached the end of the line? Is it already time? Cause there's so many things I need to do And things I need to say So many precious moments That I've let get away Dear Lord, give me resolution If indeed I need to say goodbye Is this really real? Have I reached the end of the line? Is it already time? Is it already time? We'll know something Thursday. You know, it seems like every day there's a half a dozen new folks that I get to meet down at Marcy Joe's who've driven from all across the country just to have breakfast or lunch. And let me tell you, it's worth it. Let's check in down there now and see what's cooking. Y'all come on in. Stay wherever you want.
The other day I met a girl who said she's been wanting to come to our restaurant for breakfast, but unfortunately she's allergic to gluten. And with her diet, she was afraid that she wouldn't have anything here that she could eat at Marcy Joe's. So I told her about today's recipe, which has no gluten in it at all. Today we're gonna to show you how to make our famous Western omelet. And there is no better cook to make a Western omelet than the gal right here, Miss Marcy oh, herself. Thank you, thank yes. you. I've made a lot of Western omelets. I know you. <laughs> when have. we first opened up, that's all. It seemed like everybody wanted Western omelets. <laughs> well, they're so good, and you get yeah. quite a helping. You pull. do, you really do. They're beautiful. All right, so first I'm gonna start off with some egg. What I did was I took three eggs and I just scrambled them up really good. And you want to get your pan and you want to spray it really good and get it really hot. I mean, not you know, burning hot, but really, really hot. Mm -hmm. That's a good sound. Yeah. The eggs start sizzling. Now in this pan, we've gone ahead and put some bacon grease in here. And bacon grease is really what adds that really nice texture and mm -hmm. flavor um, to your vegetables. And the great thing about omelets is that you can add them however you like. However, right. you can you know flavor them however you want. <clears throat> We're gonna make this into our Western, as we said. So we got some green pepper. We have some onion and some tomato. And then we're gonna add our meats. Now our meats are already pre-cooked, of course, so we have our bacon, some sausage, and some ham. Now, when you have an omelet here, as I mentioned before, this isn't gonna be some little rinky-dink thing. Mm -hmm. And the other thing that we love to serve with our Western omelets is our home fries. And people yeah. go crazy over they our home do. fries. These aren't little, little potatoes that are frozen and you just throw them in something right. and heat them up. These are red potatoes that we cut by hand. We have sliced onions and we fry these babies up and they are so they good. They are really good. Jeez. And then also I like to uh, put some garlic and pepper on all my mm, ingredients there. Good stuff. And then the egg, while it's cooking, you want to make sure that you kind of just rotate your pan a little bit here. See how I'm doing that? And that way the egg gets spread out more and it's going to cook more even. See, I don't do very well making omelets. I know one day you, some, for some reason you were out and I had to be the short order cook. And it was a Saturday. Yes, I remember that. And I, remember I that. thought I was going to die because everybody decided to order omelets that day. And I can just tell you, they probably tasted great, but they did not look great. They weren't near Aww. as beautiful as yours. So once we get all this stuff together, this is beautiful. Are you ready for me to top this on top of there? Almost. Okay. Actually, let me see your thing there. Dilly bobber. Yeah. Everything that Marcy can't think of a name for in the kitchen becomes a dilly bobber. It does. Yeah. So anytime we get a new person in here working for us, or so they, she, Marcy will say, hey, hand me that dilly bobber. And they just look at me like, what in the world is a dilly bobber? See how I've worked the egg throughout all along here? And you just want to kind of make sure the eggs, yep, and make sure the eggs all cooked. It takes a few minutes because I'm cooking on a smaller burner. Another thing that we do here too is if you want to try to, if you're watching the amount of cholesterol that you're putting in your diet or the amount of fat, we can always do egg white omelets as well. Yeah. Because there's some people who, you know, they're gonna, <laughs> they're gonna go ahead and have the homemade bread, and by golly, they're gonna have a sticky bun. Yeah. But they're gonna order an egg white egg white omelet. <laughs> yeah. I've made Every lots of them, too. Every little bit helps, Every little bit helps. Oh, go ahead. Are we ready to pour this yeah, on? Yeah, and I put some cheese on top of my egg once my egg got cooked, too. Just and that's just regular cheddar cheese? Yep. Okay. And then you're going to pour your ingredients, all the uh, onion and pepper and sausage and ham and bacon, all on one side. That Here way it's there on one side. That's where the magic starts. And then you got to give it a few minutes because you want it to get brown. And it takes a few minutes, like I said, because we're cooking on smaller burners, so it takes a few minutes. But doesn't that look great? It looks amazing. I just can't believe you're gonna be able to flip that flap over. Yeah, it's beautiful. It's a lot of food. So, today, we have our taste tester. And we opened the restaurant six years ago, mm -hmm. and this little guy showed up, he was four years old. Yes. He came in every Saturday yep. with his grandpa, Ralph, yep. and he is here today, Aww. and I cannot believe how tall he's gotten. So oh, we're gonna I bring him it. over. Peyton, come on up here, buddy. How are Hi, you doing? Peyton, how are you? It's on? so good to see you. He used to come in, and we'd have a chalkboard over there, and he'd draw on it. I, do you remember all that? Yeah. Oh my goodness! You just have grown so much. I, I just can't get over how tall you. How how old are you now? You're ten. Ten. Wow. And what grade are you in? Fifth. Fifth grade. And I understand you like our omelets. Well, why don't you go ahead and taste that omelet and see if this is as good as what you get when you come here with your grandpa? 
His grandpa is a farmer, and he lives right across the road by us, too. How is that? Is that good? Do you like it? Well, good. good. Well, take that over there and finish her off. You might want to share some with your grandpa right. since he brought you here. <laughs> Thank you, Peyton. All right, wow. so I flipped it, and then you're going to top it with some cheese like that real quick. That's beautiful. And then you're going to grab a plate back here, and then you're just going to slide her on. Slide it on there. Isn't that beautiful? That's Look at gorgeous. that. That's magic right there, folks. Well, as you can see, this is our Western Omelet yep. by Marcy. Here at Marcy Joe's, where we're changing lives. One bite at a time. Seems about a week ago, over in Blairsville, there was a bank robbery. Feller come in with a mask on, made the teller fill his sack up with cash, and was on his way out when his customer grabbed his mask and pulled it off, revealing the robber's face. Well, he shot that feller deader than a hammer, looked over there, and there was a teller looking straight at him and shot him, and everybody else in there looked straight down at the floor. Well, he said, did anybody else in here see my face? Boy, oh, wasn't nobody saying nothing, you know. He was all quiet, looking down at the floor. And all of a sudden, old Elmer Cobb over in the corner said, I'm pretty sure my wife got a good look at you. <laughs> that ain't funny, but you can think about it anyway. two years we've been invited to be part of the Heber City Cowboy Gathering and it's become one of our favorite places to come and perform. It's set in the scenic Heber Valley just outside of Park City, Utah and we arrive just in time for the kickoff dinner. The event draws lots of different Western entertainment from all across the country and one of the acts performing at the dinner that night played the saw fiddle which we'd never seen before. Now, as most folks know, my wife, Joey, is a bit of a cowgirl, and we always try to record at least one western theme song on each album we make. So to come be part of an event like this and others like it around the country is super important to us. Wow, what a beautiful morning. When we're there, we stay in the beautiful Zermatt Resort. And as you drive through the towns of Heber and Midway, you'll find that they're filled with beautiful little homes and buildings that look like they're from another place and time. We always try and stop by and visit one of our favorite artists, Robert Duncan. Guys, good to see you. We love the paintings that he makes. They're scenes from a simpler time. I like to paint rural life and Western, partly because I just think that it's uh, important in art to paint how we would like life to be, as well as the best of life. This year, they asked us to sing a couple songs for the kids at a local middle school. And though I think they liked our music, they really love the young Danzy family band that played just before us. They were precious. This was the 18th annual Heber Gathering, and it's run by some wonderful folks. One of them is Tom Whitaker. I'm Tom Whitaker, trail boss of the Heber City Cowboy Poetry Gathering and Buckaroo Fair. We've grown from uh, 250 on a Friday night to now, uh, we go five nights and we'll have up to 10, 12,000 people that come from all over the United States. Some of the other artists performing this year at the gathering were the Bar J Wranglers, the Haunted Wind Chimes, Michael Martin Murphy, R.W. Hampton, the Quavy Sisters Band, and many others. Cowboy poetry and country songs aren't really all that different. They're both all about telling a good story. And the legendary Waddy Mitchell, who's the master of ceremonies each year, is one of the best storytellers I've ever heard. Did you ever wish you could turn time back, live things over again to abort regrets, or maybe bite a lip so as not to hurt a friend? Lives could be enhanced. But you know, we best try to do it the first time round, because, folks, there ain't no second chance. 
If you have time this fall, be sure to join us at the Heber Cowboy Gathering in Utah and discover why we love this event and Western music so much. This morning the pews were hay bales The pulpit a saddle thrown over the stall The floor just a carpet of sawdust The baptistry was a rusty old trough steeples there were no hymnals but heaven came down there were no suits just worn out boots standing on holy ground I guess it's true if even two are gathered in his midst that's where Jesus is Somewhere they were gathered and praying Their pulpit a foot locker dropped in the sand Sundays at home just a memory but there in that tent They still felt his hand There were no steeples There were no hymnals But heaven came down There were no suits Just worn out boots Standing on holy ground I guess it's true if even two are gathered in his midst. That's where Jesus is. On an airplane or a tour bus. And in the silence, he always meets us. Where there's no steeples, where there's no hymnals, but heaven comes down. In our Sunday shoes, or in our cowboy boots, it's all holy ground. I guess it's true if even two are gathered in his midst. That's where Jesus is. And this is where Jesus is. Beautiful, right? Thank you. Opening the windows and letting in air Holding hands when we're saying a prayer That's important to me That's important to me Don't forget about what's most important to you I'm Joey And I'm Rory Tune in again next week Same place, same time